You're listening to Welcome to Eloma, a podcast for highly ambitious dreamers who get shit done. I'm your host, Kylie Peters. This is a space where we talk about leading in both your business and your life. So as owners, I think we default to leadership in business, but it's so easy to forget about the importance of also taking a leadership role in your own life, as silly as that might sound. Um, I, a scene that comes up to me for anybody who likes the movie, The Holiday, Kate Winslet is talking to her old, her old man friend that sounded romantic. It's, it's very platonic, but he says, you know, So often we forget to be the leading ladies in our own lives and we act as the best friend. So I think it's an important reminder that we need to lead in our own lives as well. Uh, We talk a lot about work-life blend and today's guest is also going to introduce um, this new mindset of an ally mindset into the mix, which I can't wait to get into. Today's guest is an executive coach, author, speaker, CEO of Sky Team, a global leadership development firm with over... She has th- over 30 years of leadership experience. Um, her name is Morag Barrett, and her newest book, You, Me, We, Why We All Need a Friend at Work, is coming out this October. I'm super excited to jump into the work she's been doing around leadership and mindset. So welcome to Iloma, Morag. Hi, Kay- Kylie. I am so looking forward to this conversation. Same, same, same. So, Morag, you spent your career becoming an authority in leadership. Talk to me a little bit more about the importance of leading not only in business, but also in our own lives. Oh, my God. You said it in the introduction. I think it's so easy to look at the task in hand. Um, And I certainly, as I reflect on my career, you know, you're leading through school, you're getting the schoolwork done, you're getting the job done, you're trying to impress the bosses. Then obviously I have got three sons, they're all six foot tall now. You're looking (laughs) after them, but we can sometimes forget to prioritize ourselves and our own needs. And if we aren't doing that as a foundation, then at some point our energy levels, our ability to lead outward is Mm. impacted if we're not leading inward as well. So Mm. exciting times as we start to think about how do we integrate both. I love the way you phrase that, leading outward and leading inward. I've never heard it said like that, but I really, really like that because it kind of goes with the saying of like, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? Mm-hmm. It's also very difficult to lead externally in an authentic way if you aren't successfully leading yourself internally, yeah. which I've actually and, never thought about until right now. <laughs> well, to be honest, nor have I. I just heard myself <laughs> say it and you liked it. So I think, okay, <laughs> we've got a new thing. And it's interesting because you talk about the ally mindset, which I talk about in the new book, You, Me, We, Why We All Need a Friend at Work and How to Show Up on One. And the foundation for that from our research is abundance and generosity. And it's something that comes easily for me. And what we mean by abundance and generosity is, do I care about your success as much as I do my own? Now, it comes easy to me. I love my work with leaders, whether as, as a coach, as I'm facilitating team events or leadership programs helping others to succeed. It's give, give, give. But I'm sure that everybody listening here has come to a point where they've said, yes, of course I'll help. Yes, I'll Mm -hmm. do that. And inside they're going, no, I don't have time for it. Or we're doing it and we're muttering to ourselves, I can't believe I said yes. Oh my goodness, they're taking me for granted. And that's the example of leading inward. It's how do we say yes and and make sure that we are part of that equation and that we're not just saying yes on default, but we're also able to give a powerful no when needed Mm -hmm. so that either we're prioritizing ourselves or prioritizing the yeses we've already given. Mm -hmm. So leading outward and leading inward, you and I can now set the tone. Hashtag you heard it here. Yes, (laughs) yes, you did. I I definitely heard it here first. Um, I love that. And you know, the other word that comes up for me there is like boundaries is Mm -hmm. setting our boundaries. You know, I had um, a small exchange with my team member this morning and I was like, hey, can you help do this thing? And she was like, can I do this this afternoon? I'm busy doing this thing now. And I was like, yes. Also clapping emoji. Thank you for saying what you need and setting those boundaries. And she was like, Mm -hmm. and I was like, good. It starts with even like the smallest things. It does. It does. And it's making the implicit explicit. Again, I talk about this in both of my books, Cultivate the Power of Winning Relationships and then the You, Me, We. 
because often we can look at our colleagues and say, oh, well, you know, Kindly's been doing podcasts for years. She knows what she's doing. But you and I spent time in the green room setting expectations because your podcast and how you host it is different to others that I may have appeared on. And as leaders, when we're working with people in our organizations, whether we're small businesses, as I am at SkyTeam, or we're in a 10,000 place, you know, conglomerate, every opportunity to make the implicit explicit, what does success look like on this team? Mm. What can you expect from me as your boss? What do I need to expect from you as my colleague? Goes a long way to building that trust that we need to yes. move forward and be better together. Yes. And trust is so necessary when it comes to leadership. I mean, how can we really lead if we can't build trust first, right? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Well, and let's take that one step further to the leading outward and leading inward. Like we can't lead outward. Okay. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm about to word vomit here. We can't lead outward without building that trust, right? But we also can't really lead inward unless we build that trust with ourselves. Oh, Oh, I know that the penny is probably, I get goosebumps as you think about this. Because here's the thing, we use the word leadership, management, success. I mean, all of these interchangeably, but without any real thought what it means. And if you actually Google the word leadership, I'm not joking because I do it regularly. Of course, yeah. Billions, I mean, literally billions of results and apologies because I've contributed to many of those with articles (laughs) and books I've written. Well, a billion definitions of leadership, that isn't helpful. And even if you go as far as saying, well, great leadership, or as I do, freaking awesome leadership, and (laughs) you're still going to get a million results. And so it goes back to you. Leading inward starts with, well, what does my definition of success Mm. look like for me. And I know yep. my own career of 30 years, I've spent too much, too long, a long time, keeping up with the societal norms of other people's definitions of success, yep. as opposed to defining my own. Because if I can't define, and you talk about work-life blending, and it's always annoyed me that work-life separation, integrate. it is life of which work is part of it. So if you want to have a great life that includes work, what does that success look and feel like for you personally? Yeah. And how do you need to show up? What does your leadership need to look and feel like? And once you can define those, mm-hmm. then you have the opportunity to say, well, what do I need to learn? Where do I need to flex? But ultimately, did I do my best? But that allows us to start communicating the guardrails and meeting others where they're at. That's why we've got a Venn diagram on the cover of You, Me, We. Because ultimately we're better together, but it has to start with me understanding what am I needing? What am I wanting out of this relationship? Then I can be curious about what are you trying to achieve Kylie, in your business and in your work and in your life? Mm -hmm. And then that brings us to the intersection of the we. So how do we achieve that together? I love that. that's the power. Yes. I love that so much because I've really leaned hard into defining success for yourself because I think so often, just like you said, we end up just doing the thing and then all of a sudden we're not happy or we're burnt out and it's like, what mm-hmm. are we doing? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, cause we didn't get clear on what we were trying to do here. And I love Brene Brown talks about, you know, um, define what done is define what success is like, let's get really clear because that has such a vague general standing. Unless we make the, how did you say, make the implicit explicit? Explicit, yes. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, so, uh, Maura, talk to me a little bit about a few tactical ways that people might be able to make changes so that they can be effective in leading both as we have now termed outward as well as inward. Okay, well, let's start with the basics. Let's look outward. If you think about your career, those listening yourself, the colleagues you would jump at the chance to work with again, your best boss, best leaders, best whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Who comes to mind and what makes them special? So who's coming to mind for you, Kylie, as we, we do this? The people you would jump at the chance to work with again. Not good that there's not that many people coming to mind. We only need one. Let's see. Of a former leader? A leader. A former leader. 
that I would want to work with again. I've got a lot of colleagues. There you go. Take that, the colleagues, because we're all leaders. Somebody is always watching us and wishing, I wish I was as articulate as Kylie. I wish I had a podcast like her. So it doesn't matter where (laughs) we are in our career, whether you're 30 years in like me or just starting out, somebody's watching. So you are a leader. So pick one of your colleagues. Okay. What made them special? They're just really, really good at the thing that they do. And they're great listeners and collaborators. And you see, I've asked that question of thousands of leaders at all levels from around the world. And invariably, when we look at the traits that we admire in others, there's two things that come to mind. One is, it is rarely about how smart they are or what they did. It is usually about how they made us feel. So they mm-hmm. listened well, they challenged us, they gave me the kick in the pants when they, I needed it, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So there, looking outward, you've got already the things that you admire in others as a definition of leadership of, well, how are you doing against those? If I went and asked mm-hmm. the people around you, who's a colleague you'd want to work with again, would your name come to mind? Then you can look inward and do that, how am I living up to it? But also on the, on the dark side, Thinking about when are you draining your bucket? When are you frustrated? Mm. When are you BMWing, bitching, moaning, and whining about oh, here we go again or not <laughs> that again? It's a new one. That's I not, like that. I like that. I lo- I'm yeah, BMWing. Yeah. So I bitching, moaning, and whining. And often when we do that, we're complaining to our significant other or the dog, or we're rolling our eyes. We're not having the conversation with the person that's triggering it and resetting and recalibrating expectations. A bit like your colleague who, when you said, can you do that now? And she courageously, and I applaud her, came back and said, actually, can I do that this afternoon? Because I'm in the midst of this. How many of us, and I know early in my career, I would have just gone, good grief, doesn't she know I'm in the middle of this? And I would have tried to do both and done neither as well as I could have done. Mm -hmm. So what is the first step we can do? One is look outward and identify the role models. And then we can look inward and say both, how am I living up to those ideals? If that's what I like in other leaders, but also then understand, well, what depletes and drains my bucket? When am I BMWing? Because then what can I do to reduce those triggers Mm. so that I can really be the best version of me, which is the whole premise of you, me, we, is how do I show up as a friend for myself? and a friend for others in spite of the button pushing and whatever else that might be being um, presented to me. That's interesting. I really like that perspective because um, one of the exercises I really love is the zone of genius by Gay Hendricks and the big leap. And he talks a lot about the zone of excellence, things that you do really well, people would pay you for, but drain your bucket. And the zone of genius, the things you get lost in time doing, and oh my gosh, you could do all day, every day. And I'm kind of paralleling that with what you're saying of the BMWing, the bitching, moaning, mm-hmm. whining. I love this. I'm, I'm going to totally take that. Um, and that to me is like, would land in the zone of excellence. Like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this, et cetera. And then showing up as your best self is is operating that sort of genius in that capacity. But I like the um, the translation that I'm like coming up with here is like it's how you embody those types of things. Like you are those things, you live those yes. things, and these are all conscious yes. choices that we make, right? That's it. Leadership is a choice, and that's why we came up well designed the the ally mindset and the ally mindset profile that goes with it. Because in my first book, Cultivate, where I talk about relationship dynamics and are we allies, are we supporters, are we uh, rivals or are we adversaries, it transformed teams and cultures. But I consistently got asked, but yeah, but how do I show up as an ally? And so that's what You, Me, We does. We went back through our research, the thousands of leaders who've been through our program, the more than 500 who've completed the Ally Mindset Profile, and we identified five practices Practices because they're things that we need to do consciously and deliberately every single day. And um, of those, for example, some will come naturally. Abundance and generosity, I've already mentioned it. It's the foundational level. It comes easy to me when it's going outwards. Prioritizing myself is something that I have to be thoughtful and deliberate about. Yes. The third element, or sorry, the fourth element is candor and debate. Now you think about your colleague who said, no, can I do it this afternoon? That shows candor. It shows also the third element of courage and vulnerability 
to actually push back to say, no, I can't do this. And so for me, candor, oh, sorry, courage when it comes to running the business, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I've got a million <laughs> ideas and I can go where you want to go. But courage when it comes to tough conversations and feedback, mm -hmm. I am like a chocolate fire guard. I'm pathetic, even though I teach it for a living. A chocolate fire? Chocolate fire guard, chocolate teapot. Not much use. Chocolate fire guard. Until oh my, God, my team it. hold me accountable. And I've learned to move forward in spite of my discomfort. Yeah. So the power of the ally mindset profile is that A, it provides insights to where am I naturally good and where might I need to um, pay extra care and attention and who and how am I going to fill that gap and make a choice to turn the dial up to be more assertive when I need to or turn the dial down if I need to be more reflective and listening. But each conversation, each meeting, I am giving a few seconds to think about what's needed and how do I show up as the best version of me to help you to be the best version of you so that we can achieve the goals of this meeting and move forward together. Okay, I love that. So just for our listeners out there, can you recap? You said there's five main my five yes. main uh, elements yes. to the ally I mindset. So if you can recap the five main and then recap the ally mindset. Okay, so bonus stuff. So you don't, if you're driving oh, and listening, or maybe you're in the shower singing along to this soundtrack, whatever, um, you can go and take your own personal ally mindset profile and we'll put the links in the speaker note, but go to skyteam, S-K-Y-E, team.cloud forward slash Aloma, and you will automatically get taken to the ally mindset profile. And thank you very much for that, Maureen. But the five elements, the foundation is abundance and generosity. Do I care about your success as much as I do my own? Can I define what success, leadership, et cetera, looks like for me? Then I can move to connection and compassion. Because once I know my guardrails, I can be curious about learning about you, learning about you beyond the job title you have today, your backstory, what's happening mm -hmm. in your lives, and connect with compassion and empathy that helps you to navigate your difficult days, but also keep us aligned and focused on the goals that we need to achieve. From there, it's courage and vulnerability. And for your listeners, they'll have gathered I have an accent. I'm English. And for the first ugh, 50 years of my life, I have personified the stereotype of stiff upper lip, walk it off, nothing to see here, professional mask at all times. But I have learned through writing my books, through my work with leaders, that when I show vulnerability, when I admit I don't know, when I admit yeah. I've made a mistake, when I can say, you know what, I am tired and I cannot go another step, the world has not and the sky has not fallen in. In fact, my team, my allies have rallied around and supported me through it. Mm -hmm. So abundance and generosity, connection and compassion, courage and vulnerability, which then leads to candor and debate, because without the other three, I'm not going to say what I'm truly thinking, which yep. is, Kylie, that was a daft idea, that will never work. <laughs> with that is I'm not going to go the extra mile I'm just going to go yes great suggestion and then go out and BMW to my colleague BMW yeah and then the fifth element which again is the capstone I've seen so many leaders this is common sense we know what we should do but sometimes we forget to follow through especially in times of uncertainty and so the capstone is action and accountability do mm -hmm. I do what I say I'm going to do do I hold myself and you accountable, especially, for example, like the pandemic, when the world is tipped upside down and given a damn good shape? Seriously. You don't throw the rule book out. That's when we have to be able to pull together. Yep. So those are the five practices that if listeners choose to take the Ally Mindset Profile, they'll learn their personal strengths and gaps and some first steps for how to amplify those. And of course, yeah. there is a ton more in the book. book. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm definitely going to check out that assessment. I think that's awesome. Um, and then how would you, how are you defining the ally mindset? So tell, uh, help me understand the question about defining the ally mindset. So there's so many different mindsets people talk about, right? Like the abundance mindset, scarcity mindset, et cetera. So you mentioned the foundational pillars of the ally mindset, but if somebody is like, oh, I need to adopt the ally mindset, what is it? Is it that they're trying to adopt like being a friend to 
themselves to their, to others. What, what is the, if you were to define it? That would be, it. it's my overall philosophy for life. Cause if you think about it, it doesn't matter who we are or what mm-hmm. we're doing. Relationships, especially professional relationships are like the heart and lungs of for success. None of us high perform alone. But all of us, and in my research, the Ally Mindset Profile, 67% of the leaders who've responded said that their success has been undermined by the words or actions of a colleague. Think about that for a minute. Two thirds. Oh, that's so hard. Which means that all of us at some point are either undermining or being undermined. And yet I have met very few leaders who get up in the morning thinking, can I make Kylie have a bad day today. How can I mess up this project? And again, it comes back to the implicit not being made explicit. Yes. So an ally mindset is around how do I orientate myself for success in life, at work and in home in a way that makes us better together? I love it. I love it. So for listeners, obviously you can take the assessment. And we'll make sure that that link is in the show notes. But are there any like um, common things that you've seen as you've done all this work with leaders that, you know, low hanging fruit types of things that people could start to implement right now to better, better adapt an ally mindset? So I'll give you two. The okay, first I'll one connects them. to connection and compassion. Okay. In our modern hybrid world, the Zoom camera, the Teams camera, it doesn't matter what camera has created much of a hub and spoke. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the quality of our relationships, the only time you Zoom me is to check in on what I'm doing. Where's that project? Where's the PowerPoint? What's happening? Mm. So the first tip is take a minute, take two minutes to check in on how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So at Sky Team, we use a system called Ripples and Joys. We start every team meeting with Ripples and Joys. Ripples and Joys. I love it. A ripple is like... What a project you've moved forward, an impact you've had for a customer. It, for me this week, it will be this conversation because it was <laughs> so much fun. And that leading outward, leading inward, aha, yeah. that we both had. And then a joy, again, it could be this or it could be just something that made me smile, a new ice cream, the walking outside in the sunshine. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But allowing people the time and the space to connect at a human level and then move to the what needs to get done. Mm -hmm. That's one powerful tip. Yeah. So in fact, you know what? I'm going to leave it there. Oh, no. The second one, I'll go back to the best colleague. Here you go. One tip then for moving forward, the best colleague that you were all thinking of earlier on, and I'm hoping you've all got one, because at least one, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. But I dare you, I double dog dare you, I want you to message that person, send them a LinkedIn message, a text, an email, a message to the universe if they've left this mortal coil that just says, hey, I was listening to the Aloma podcast, thinking about best colleagues, thought of you, and here's why. And I guarantee you will strengthen, rekindle that relationship. Mm -hmm. You've got nothing to lose. So step one, pause long enough before you get to the what what are we doing and talk about how are we doing. Mm -hmm. And step two, reach out to that colleague that you would jump at the chance to work with again and just let them know that you were thinking of them. I love that. That's just kind of putting good juju out into the world. And Mm -hmm. I'm such a big fan of giving credit where credit's due and also making sure that the people who have impacted you know that they've impacted you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know, I think it goes so far. It It does. And Kylie, that's a really powerful example of where we fall into the success paradox, somebody called it in an earlier conversation, is that we assume that we've worked together for you. You know that I appreciate you. You know that I value your contribution, Mm -hmm. but we don't make the implicit explicit. Mm -hmm. And I've yet again to meet anybody who says, oh, no, no, please don't give me any more compliments. (laughs) Right. Tell people that you value them to recognize just a thank you Mm -hmm. is enough for that ripple and joy to give it out to then reciprocate that. I love the ripples and joys. And I'll take that one step further, too. I think especially as we're talking about leaders and, you know, I do a lot of work with small business owners 
There's also a lot of imposter syndrome that gets tossed around here, right? And even as leaders, regardless of how seasoned we are, as owners, regardless of how seasoned we are, there's always new challenges. There's always things that we have never experienced before. So in many cases, while we may be navigating slightly familiar waters, we're still navigating new scenarios. And so just to know that your team or a fellow colleague saw you Mm -hmm. navigate that, said, hey, I think you did a really nice job there. Like exactly to what you said, Morag, make the implicit explicit because what's going on in our minds more often than that is like, holy crap, I hope I didn't screw that up really, really bad. Or I hope I didn't offend anybody. Or I hope I didn't crash the company or all the things, but like playing it real cool. (laughs) And I'll build up because that imposter syndrome never goes away. I mean, I've been in my career 30 years. I've had Sky Team for 15 years and I can guarantee it appeared this week or last week and it will appear next month. The key is, can you turn the volume down? And so with an ally mindset, when I get into that, oh, shit, I'm not good enough, I I drop the ball on or what if, then I have the courage and vulnerability to share it with my team, but also to ask and take help when it's offered. And whether we're solopreneurs, this is still a team sport. There are people out there who can help. So when you listen to that imposter voice, laugh at it. I laugh in the face of danger, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> but turn the dial down because you do not have to believe everything that you think. I love it. And so, Mark, for you, as you've adapted this ally mindset in your career, how has that shifted the way you lead? Oh, interestingly. So it's courage and vulnerability and candor and debate it go hand in hand because what you can't see off screen here, for those watching the video, is I have my fancy microphone arm. And as of this year, it's taken me this long to learn it. I have three sticky notes, three sticky notes each of a different color, each represents the three things that I should be focused on this year. Because in addition to writing the book with my team, we're going through a rebrand and I have a a very important uh, client that I adore in New York City that I'm supporting. So anything else, Morag is supposed to be saying no to or a no, Mm -hmm. not yet. So not only do I now have those priorities visible in front of me, I've started color coding my calendar so, nice. Yes. Yeah, so they need to align with those. And my team has explicit permission to kick my butt if any of the default color that doesn't align appears on my um, schedule, because it means I'm allowing myself to be distracted by shiny objects. I so love it. the ally mindset has given me a way of holding myself accountable. It has given a way to empower me and my team to have what might otherwise have felt like difficult conversations. But without them, Mm -hmm. we would not be moving as forward and growing the business and having the impact we have in the way that we intended. So it's powerful. I'm taking my own medicine and I'm hearing consistently from leaders how it's helping to transform their own experiences and the ripple effect it's having for their teams and organizations. And how is that impacting from like a personal standpoint? So we talk about leading outward and leading inward, right? And the ally mindset as we lead our team. But how are you, how are you um, witnessing that show up in like your personal life or in, internally um, when it comes to like leading it inward? So in my personal life, the fact is you can't tell. I have the posh shirt on the outside. I have my gym (laughs) kit on underneath because this is Zoom ready. (laughs) And so one of the things that I've elevated, I continually deprioritize my own fitness. And so with the ally mindset, my team gave me a kick in the pants. They said, you've been saying this for 10 years, either do something or shut up, stop BMWing. Mm. So I'm doing something. So today, as soon as we are finished here, you are the the call for the afternoon. I am going to go and work out. So it is, again, it's just given me permission to be different how I show up for me. And it starts with abundance and generosity. Fitness was there. I just was not following through on the rest. My team have held me accountable. And this is one of the Mm. tactics that's working for me to make sure I now live it and follow through. I love that. And I just, I, again, I love that even at the beginning of this episode, we talked about leading outward and leading inward and, One, that phrase had never come up for me before, but now I'm obsessed with it because this leading inward, it's it's self-care, it's kindness, it's the abundance Mm -hmm. and generosity that we so often talk about pushing out into the world, which everyone's like, oh, Mm -hmm. that's a good thing. But what about for ourselves? And I love that that's such a core function here. Um, And thank you for bringing that up because I think it's it's a beautiful thing. 
Yeah, well, if we don't do self-care, we've been taught that self-care is selfish. Yes. But actually, the selfish thing is not to take care of ourselves first, because, again, if we're not filling our own bucket, we won't have the stamina in order to stay the game for the long game, whatever game it is we're playing, yeah. whether it's the game of life, the game of work, the game of happy families, the game of whatever it might be. Yeah. We have to fill our own bucket first. Yeah, we got to take care of ourselves. We can't be injured and expect to put out a star performance, right? Yes. Like we got to The British attitude of walk it off, it doesn't work. Stop it. So I yeah. <laughs> you'll be uh in, it will, you'll find those injuries become more permanent, right? Yes. Um, Morik, what are you most excited about right now? Oh, well, I am definitely excited for the launch of You Me We. We are bringing this book to the world shouting because the feedback that we've had tells us that this is an important message for all of us in a world that, despite the technology, where it would appear that we can be more connected, in fact, many of us are feeling disconnected. Mm -hmm. And coupled with that, we have, go and check out our YouTube channel. We have a new video that explains what makes Sky Team different. And we aren't like any other leadership firm that you may have experienced, which means we're not for everybody. But that comes back to courage and vulnerability. That's okay. But we have a whole rebranding, so I'm excited for that and just starting to drip feed that out to the world. But check out the YouTube video. You'll know the one. You'll know the one. You'll know. You'll know. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, All right. So as we wrap up here, this is my last question for you. Um, What is the greatest insight or discovery you have about life and leadership? You can't be successful in business or in life unless you're successful in cultivating winning relationships. And mm. that means we're in this together. And by golly, we are better together. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Morag, anything else you want to toss out there? Oh, just grateful for the conversation. I'm really excited. I can't wait. I'm going to go and take it out on the rowing machine now and do a couple of thousand meters. But thank you, Carly, for the opportunity. Thank you so much. And so one more time, um, just for all of our listeners, what was the link for the assessment again? So it's skyteam, S-K-Y-E, team.cloud forward slash Eloma. Um, You can find out more at skyteam.com. And please do connect with me on LinkedIn. If you send me a message, ask a question, need recommendations for a resource, or you'd like to explore our programs and keynotes, et cetera, Message me and I am the one who responds. Abundance and generosity. I'd love to help you to help others to be successful. Amazing. All right, Morag. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time today. Thanks for being a guest on the show for all of our listeners. Um, if you love today's show, please go ahead and leave us a review. If you didn't, well, then hope you have a lovely day. And uh, Morag, thank you so much. We'll make sure all of that's in the show notes. It's been a pleasure. To continue learning how to better build your business and make your vision a reality, subscribe to the Welcome to Eloma email list at welcometoeloma.com.